When someone asks the question, what is the best brand to look at when you're going for that first Swiss watch? One of the brands that I quickly will mention will be Hamilton. They easily have one of the best combinations of established heritage, timeless designs, and value for money to go along with it. But given how broad the Hamilton collection is and being fortunate enough to really get a handle of all their contemporary watches, I wanted to look at the brand a little bit more specifically and just kind of go through what are the things that you should know before looking to buy a watch from the brand. So in this video, we're gonna cover a few different points. One will be the backstory and significance with the history of the brand. Second, the different model families and major points to go along with those model families. Why or maybe why not to buy a Hamilton watch, what they do best and what they don't do well. And then at the end, look at some of my favorite models and recommendations for specific types of watches that I think would be the best representations of what the brand has to offer. In order to understand where Hamilton stands today in the industry, it's important to take a moment and touch on their history. While today they're very much a Swiss brand with their headquarters now being located in Beale, Hamilton will forever be tied to the world of American watchmaking with roots dating back well into the 1800s. Hamilton Watch Company was initially conceived in 1892 after some mergers of prior existing watch companies and acquisition of assets following the bankruptcy of the Lancaster Watch Company. Hamilton throughout the early part of the 20th century became one of the largest producers of pocket watches and greatly benefited from the growing railroad industry. This rise of production led to their developed footprint in Lancaster County of being one of the top top employers in the area, as well as owners of a giant 13-acre complex where the brand's watches were being developed. One of Hamilton's most transformative contributions to watches in helping shape their reputation was during World War I and World War II, when Hamilton shifted production from consumer and railway watches to focus on building then novel watches to be worn on the wrists of US soldiers fighting overseas. In World War II, the brand developed a design identity through their production of field watches that still remain greatly felt in their timepieces today as they produce military watches for standard issue with a basic design concept that we have come to recognize as the archetype for a field watch. In the late 1950s, Hamilton employed mid-century design principles combined with some of the first ever electric watch movements with their now iconic Ventura collection before getting involved in the race for the first automatic chronograph in the late 1960s. After purchasing Swiss watch brand Buren in its facilities in Switzerland in 1966, Hamilton and Buren maintained a joint U.S.-Swiss production model until 1969 when the U.S. factory was no longer the facility for their watch production, shifting this over to Switzerland going forward. It is important to note that the structure still remains to this day. I actually visited it. It is now an apartment complex, which is kind of a bummer, but the structure for the most part is still well preserved. If you want to take a closer look at that, definitely check out my Chrono H review. After some rough times, Hamilton was eventually purchased in the early 1970s by SSIH, an organization that through a merger in the 1980s exists now under the name and direction of the Swatch Group, which helped breathe life into the brand. And now Hamilton exists as one of the leading makers of Swiss watches under $2,000, spanning a wide array of collections. But with all these different collections, it can create challenges for consumers to unpack what is all there. So now let's discuss just kind of the playing field in the different model families that you should be familiar with. For our first collection, we have the American Classic Collection. This is, of all the model families, the most broad in its reach of different design styles. In addition, the American Classic Collection consists of more vintage-inspired pieces, either loosely or closely based on watches from the mid-20th century. In many ways, this is positioned in a similar manner as the Heritage Collection from other brands. So that's just kind of how Hamilton's thinking about this. Some of the most notable models within this collection here include the Intramatic series, exemplified by the Intramatic Automatic, as well as the very popular Chrono Intramatics, now being available in several different variations, as well as the manual winding Chrono H. There are a few oddballs in this line as well, namely the PSR, a watch based on the trailblazing 1970s digital model, the Pan Europe, a sports watch with vibrant colors, and the tonneau shaped Bolton Mechanical. In general though, with the American Classic line, look at this as their heritage collection with the most notable absence being their field watches. However, these are well represented in collections that I would think most collectors are going to commonly associate when they think of the brand, the khaki collections. So the khaki line is split into three separate categories, all adapted for different intended purposes through land, air, and water all of which pull from the brand's history with field watches to varying degrees. To start here, we'll have a look at the most famous of the three lines, 
the khaki field. For a lot of watch nerds out there, the khaki field is the collection that comes to mind when discussing Hamilton, with the design DNA dating back to Hamilton's supply of watches for the US military. As the modern field watch concept solidified in World War I, Hamilton supplied more than a million watches during the Second World War. Today, Hamilton is responsible for what is pretty definitively the best entry-level Swiss field watch of this style with the manual wound khaki field mechanical at $500 in a variety of colors and now available in bronze most recently. These models are probably the closest representations of the classic field watch designed from Hamilton, but for those wanting something with a little bit more of some modern looks, you're probably gonna have some more favoritism towards the khaki field automatic, which offers a bit more water resistance in the process of 100 meters and drops the faux loom. This line probably is the most grounded in its core design form formula, as no matter the complication or model from the khaki Day-Date Autos or the khaki Kings or the fan favorite Murph of interstellar cinematic fame, they all do a nice job with reverting back to the original field watch DNA. In tandem with the brand's reputation of producing field watches for infantry forces, Hamilton also has a history of producing watches for military divers, including the Hamilton Canteen, utilized by early underwater demolition teams, a predecessor to the US Navy SEALs. Today, the khaki collection is diverse, ranging from the mass appealing khaki navy scuba models to the marine chronometer styled khaki navy pioneers all the way into the more aggressive pieces from the likes of the khaki navy frogmans although there are definitely some great watches in this collection i think if you had to pinpoint one area where hamilton is not going to be maybe delivering as much as some of the competition or even some of their other collections will be more in the dive watch category for our final pillar of the khaki series we have the khaki aviation line Hamilton's home for pilot watches. Now this is a large collection as well, again with vintage inspiration with one of the best representations being the khaki aviation pilot pioneer paying tribute to the W10, a vintage military watch produced for the British Ministry of Defense from 1973 to 1976. There's also plenty of room for more modern expressions like the X-Wind or the fan favorite khaki aviation pilot Day-Date, which also made its way within the movie Interstellar. And as you probably have caught on to so far, Hamilton certainly loves some good old fashioned product placement in cinema, but they do it better than most brands out there. Next is one of the more polarizing designs from Hamilton, the Ventura. So this model family has its origins dating back to the late 1950s, being best known for its triangular case and purposefully futuristic look meant to highlight the then impressive electronic movement within. Another Ventura claim to fame is that Elvis Presley famously was a fan of the line and wore one on the 1961 film, Blue Hawaii. In terms of placing the Ventura among Hamilton's overall catalog, it is definitely one of the crazier options, but the interesting history and distinctive look make it a notable part of Hamilton's entire brand vision. From eccentric designs back to mass appeal, we now have the Jazzmaster line. This name originated from the 1950s, but now this model family in a modern context refers to contemporary dress watches with broad ranges of design and complications, though the majority feature a similar case concept. When it comes to what collection has the most models, this is actually the leader of the pack with over 100 references and has become more of a catch-all, ranging from the mass appealing Jazzmaster Auto to the many skeleton variants and their unique regulators, as well well as their other value-packed Viewmatic autos that walk the line of dressy and casual. Now going from the largest to the smallest collection, we have the often overlooked Broadway family. So this line has less than 10 pieces total under its umbrella now looking at the modern collection, leading to this probably being the most forgotten by both enthusiasts and the brand itself. The Broadway collection is best known for their distinctive looks with that use of a prominent color vertical line traveling up the dial center. Okay, so now that we have our overview of the different collections, let's talk a little bit more about Hamilton as a brand. When is, when is just the right time to look at the brand? Maybe when is not the best time to look at the brand? Let's start with a few kind of just points of consideration or cons when looking at Hamilton. As our first point here, one area where I think Hamilton is not as strong compared to other brands in their price category is going to be with the dive watch. Now they do have some just representation in this category. And I would say probably the most popular is the Navy Scuba, but that's not necessarily a true dive watch, at least from an 
an ISO uh, kind of certification standpoint. It's more of a watch capable of dive watch functionality rather than actually a true dive watch. And when you look at Hamilton, they mostly are going to focus on their field watches. That's really what they do well. Uh, but things like their dive watches sometimes are a casualty to that. Another area where I wouldn't say this is as much a miss, but it's just maybe a little bit more difficult to say that they're the definitive choice in the price category. And that's with dress watches. I mostly just actually look across the alley and just take a look at Tissot and what they're offering for around the same price. I just think they have more just variations between their dress watches. And I think it's going to allow you to have a little bit more at your disposal in terms of making a buying decision. Hamilton certainly does do some nice things with the dress watch category. You have your Intramatics as well as the Jazz Master Lines, which are some of the best dress watches under $1,000, but still just don't, doesn't have the same breath as they do with their field watches. And then one other thing that I would say is Hamilton do have some swings and misses with their just designs. They have so many different models out there that it's kind of a bit overwhelming. That's partially why I wanted to make this video and uh, just to be able to navigate their collection a little bit more thoughtfully. But now looking at the pros for Hamilton, and if you're just getting some ideas of how I feel about this brand, I'm a huge proponent of what Hamilton is offering for the price range in which they occupy. $500 to around $2,000 really being kind of their bread and butter in their price range. I think when you factor in the history, the amount of designs and watches at the disposal, when they are on, they are absolutely on. And two places where I think they are definitively probably the best option available is really for that entry level first Swiss field watch. They are the best in the price category, I believe. I don't think really, it's, it honestly sets the standard for the price category for around $500 up to $1,000. You're really gonna be hard pressed to find anything that's gonna be better value from a field watch and design perspective. And they also have history on their side when designing these things as well, unlike some other brands out there. Another area where they are going to excel is with the chronographs that they're gonna be able to offer. So for me, I would say the best $2,000 chronograph from a Swiss watch perspective is probably going to be the Intramatic. I just love the look of this. It has that panda style. I think it has that appeal that so many people are looking for from just the design perspective. And you're also getting a fully integrated chronograph movement on the inside with an extended power reserve. It's just a great look and some great value if you're going into Swiss chronographs. I definitely recommend checking out my entry level chronograph video if you just want some more context around where this one is positioned compared to the competition. Another reason why to look at Hamilton and there are going to be some carryover effects when you're looking at say the likes of other Swatch Group brands, but their movements are also going to be very hard to compete against for other brands that are outside the group. All of their movements are going to typically have extended power reserves with them. So usually how they're going to go about this is dropping the beat frequency from say like an ETA base caliber from 28,800 vibrations per hour down to 21,600 vibrations per hour to three Hertz. So this is going to really allow the stored energy in that mainspring to be maximized to hit those power reserves of 80 hours in some instances, which is honestly incredible for this price range, especially because typically when you're seeing that type of reserve, uh, that's usually associated for really kind of high end movements and in-house calibers. Just a quick rundown of their different movements. You have the H10, which is going to be the automatic modified movement based off the Eta 2824. So kind of the automatic version in their three hand models. The H50 is a hand wound Eta 2801 modified movement. You also have the H51 and then the H31. The 51 is going to be the 7753 with the drop rotor. So it's gonna be a hand wound caliber. And the 31 is just going to be essentially the same thing with the rotor. Then you have the H21 as well. This is going to be a different variant of the Valjoux family, the 7750, the most notable thing is going to be the change in how the date is going to be operated as well as the register display on the chronograph. These are going to be vertically set unlike the Hamilton Intramatics are going to have that 7753 which are going to be focused horizontal across the dial. But now to close out here, let's just look at, I would say some recommendations for maybe a different style of watch and what they do best. Just looking at a couple different categories. So what's the best dive watch that they make? Now, again, I think this is the area where they kind of lag behind some of the other brands in the price category. I would just recommend the Navy Scuba, even though it only has hundred meters of water resistance, it's not gonna be ISO 6425 compliant. It still, I think is going to be the best looking as well as kind of value packed proposition from Hamilton when you're dealing with this dive esque style design. Now when dealing with the best field watch, this is an absolute loaded category. This is really what the brand does the best. 
And if you're looking at this, I think you have to go for those entry level models as a great place to start and just recommend. You have your khaki field mechanicals. So these are going to be the hand wound versions at around $495 starting price, depending on the different strap option and case material that will change. Then you also have the khaki field auto, which is gonna offer up 100 meters of water resistance, which is gonna also lean into a bit more of a contemporary design format with dropping the faux loom markers. There of course are a ton of different options, but I think these are great starting points. And then you can kind of have some fun from there with the different things like the Khaki King uh, day dates or looking at something like the Interstellar models. When it comes to chronograph, there are a few different options. I think the one that's gonna be the most popular as well as my personal favorite and just recommendation is going to be the Intramatic Automatic Chronographs. You could go for the Chrono H as well, but the upside of having a manual wound chronograph, you don't really get to experience that with the thickness. So it doesn't really give you that much upside there. Uh, so that case, I think it's a little bit more just as a toss up of which one's better. It's just kind of more of your preference from a design perspective. Then when you're dealing with the best dress watch, I think the Jazzmaster line offers the most variety as well as probably the best value. The Intramatic is also good, but those are kind of a little bit more casual in some instances. They do have representations that make them feel a bit more dressy, but they're also a bit different because they don't have a second hand. So it's a little more unconventional with its approach. So I would look at the Jazzmaster Auto as that kind of best dress watch that the brand has to offer. And then finally, for the best kind of oddball picks, kind of those two strange watches. I think anything from the Ventura collection would be a great representation of this. I like kind of the traditional black quartz Ventura model. I think this is the perfect amount of strange. Some of the skeleton stuff is a little bit too out there for me and what it's going for, but they certainly have their market uh, and types of consumers that would want to go for something like that. And then also you can mention the PSR. This is kind of that classic digital watch and in a lot of ways created this type of format with it on the bracelet. Kind of has that bubble like case that is very strange from a modern context, but it has its charm and I actually kind of come to appreciate it and think it's pretty cool. So that's just a rundown of Hamilton, their different models, their collection, when to look at the brand, when not to look at the brand. If you guys did enjoy this video and you want me to do this again in the future for other brands out there, I'd be happy to do it. This is something I just wanted to test out. Hamilton being a brand that I really just appreciate and what they represent in the marketplace. They do a lot of things right. There are some things that they kind of lag behind some other brands in the category, but I just wanted to start kind of talking about this type of perspective because I know when you're looking at a brand for the first time, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. So I just want to kind of set the foundation with a video like this. So if you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That thumbs up will be a great indicator that you want to see more of these in the future. So really would appreciate that. Also, if you're in the market for a Hamilton watch, teddybaldesar.com or a full authorized dealer of Hamilton watches. So be sure to check out the collection that we have available. In addition, if you want to stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow along on Instagram, see some great photos of watches in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.